In England today, there is no more charming and instructive sight than an upper middle class family in full plumage. This particular family is called Forsyte, and they live in Park Lane. Indeed, all the Forsytes live around the park. It's fashionable and convenient, and property values there continue to rise steadily. Yet although each Forsyte is impressive enough singly, their true flavour can only be appreciated on the occasions when they gather together at one or other of their well-appointed houses. No branch of the Forsytes has a genuine liking for any other, but as a group, they possess that mysterious concrete tenacity which renders a family so formidable a unit of society. Today the gathering is at my Uncle Timothy's in the Bayswater Road. Yes, my uncle, for I too am a Forsyte. They call me Young Jolian because my father, Old Jolian, is at present head of the family. My father was one of the first to realise that the English have an insatiable appetite for tea and has made a blameless fortune out of it. Aunt Anne, born in 1799, the oldest Forsyte. She lives here with aunts Julie and Hester. Together they care for Uncle Timothy, the youngest brother, whom you are unlikely to meet very often. Uh, he is probably the most cautious man in England. Mr and Mrs James Forsyte. Forsyte, Bustard and Forsyte, solicitors at law. If anyone's ever met Bustard, uh, they don't mention it. Miss Winifred Forsyte, Mr S Soames My Forsyte. My cousin Soames, a junior partner and a coming man, they say. Uncle Swithin, James's twin. The fat and lean of it, my father calls them. Swithin's an estate and land agent, a bachelor. Does himself very well. He claims to have been a devil with the women. I doubt it. On the left, Uncle Roger, who collects house property as you or I would collect postage stamps. On the right, Uncle Nicholas, company director and shrewd investor in the shares of those companies. They both have large families and incomes to match. And we all come here to Timothy's in the Bayswater Road, known as Foresight Change, to exchange news and gossip, to reaffirm our confidence in the stability of the family. And we go away comforted and reassured. Why not? We're the backbone of England. We? Well, Soames is certainly, or will be. That fellow has a very highly developed sense of property even for a foresight. And I? Well, I suppose I'm a little different. No better, I assure you, but different. For one thing, my own sense of property is negligible. For another, uh, though the aunts and uncles adore Soames, I dislike him as intensely as he dislikes me. There are other things which will be revealed, but one of them is that I paint only watercolours, but still, I paint, Yo. and every foresight knows there isn't any money in that. Come on, Papa, hurry up. Sit still, June. I'm looking out for Grandpapa. He'll be late in a minute. Grandpa's never late. He's like royalty. You can set your watch by him. I haven't got a watch. No. June, you're supposed to be looking at Fraulein. She doesn't keep spinning around like a top. I'm a top. I'm a top. You're a pest, and I don't think I shall paint you after all. So? And when your papa is famous, you'll be sorry. Yes. There's Grandpapa! John. Please, Papa, may I? All right, run along, pest. <sighs> Hopeless. May I look? <laughs> Bad, isn't it? No, no, there's something soft, Joe. Mm, but not much, eh? <laughs> You're right. Landscape for me. At best, landscape with cows. And only if the cows are lying down. You underestimate yourself. Do I? I think I see myself very clearly. Papa! We're going to the zoo. And Mama's coming with us to see the lions and the monkeys. You promised we'd see the monkeys. So you shall. All are live in their cages. Well, Joe. <clears throat> Father, how are you? Pretty well, my boy. <laughs> Guten Tag, mein Herr. Uh, Guten Tag, Fraulein. No, Grandpapa. No guter tag. It's guten tag. Is it? What's the difference? <laughs> You'll never learn. I shouldn't bother if I were you. Fraulein Hilmer speaks better English than either of us. Oh. Hello. 
now, my dear. Papa. Well, now, are we all ready? Oh, now, June, dear, you're not. Now, why not? Freud, oh, no, my I'm fault, so Francis. Sorry. I, I kept it. He was drawing me. Only he was being beastly slow. <laughs> beastly? Oh, really, June? Well, he was. <laughs> Fräulein. Ach, du schrecklich. Komm mit. Raus, Liebchen, raus. Komm mit. Germans. She's an Austrian father. Same thing. Oh, indeed, no, Papa. Quite, quite different. And Fräulein Hilmer is really a most exceptional girl. Well, uh, a little quiet, perhaps. Withdrawn. But then that, too, can be an advantage, don't you know? Her parents were of quite humble stock, I believe. Uh, they're both dead now, of course. But it's therefore even more remarkable that she's become such a ladylike person and a very competent governess. Dear say, but what do you want with a foreigner, eh? Why not an English governess? Because <laughs> all the ladylike English persons happen to be working in Germany, that's why. <laughs> really, Joe? No, Papa, but she has the languages, you see. And that's so important for a child. And it's fashionable, too. Ah. No, no, indeed. All the princesses have German governesses now. The Queen herself, of course. It's the thing. Bah. But above all, she's very good with June. And the child seems quite taken with her. Doesn't she, Joe? I'd say so. As indeed we all are, aren't we, Joe? Yes. <laughs> so well, you'll if see, June Papa? gets on with her, that's all that matters. Anyhow, I'm glad you didn't choose a French one. Jumpy lot. Oh, Papa, that's absurd and it's old fashioned. That is as maybe. Oh, Joe, you heard the news. On foresight change. What do you call it? That's pretty good. Not mine, I'm afraid. Cousin George's. <laughs> That chap. That chap. Mm, tell me he's a witch. I can't see it myself. <laughs> well, what is the news? Well, I hear your Uncle James has come round and that girl of his is going to get married. Winifred? Hmm. To Monty Darty? Yes, a fellow. I haven't met him myself, but your Aunt Emily thinks the world of him, I hear. But is that a suitable match? I've no idea, but James will make sure of that. You know him, Joe? Oh, slightly. He's a friend of George's. Well, that wouldn't recommend him to me. Where's that girl? Ah, I'm ready to go, Papa. Darling, let me look. Joe, won't you come with us? Oh, I'm sorry, Father. I... Oh, no matter. Some other time. Yeah. Yeah. You and Francis must dine with me soon, Thursday. Yes. Yes. Are we free? Yes, I think oh, so. Well, yeah. I'll arrange it with Papa. Now. Oh. And uh, Joe, you won't forget we're dining at the Ashburtons tonight, so you won't wander off anywhere, will you? My love to the monkeys. Poor devils. Monty, no, that's quite enough. There's no such thing as enough. Monty, you're wicked. What's worse, you make me feel wicked too. Hooray. Oh, no, Monty, no, Monty, no, no. <laughs> Just look at me. Whatever would Mama say? Well, if I know your Mama, she'd say jolly good luck. Yes, and Papa? Yeah, now that's a different matter. Your Papa would probably sniff and say, uh, Nobody ever tells him anything, uh, but he doesn't know, but he can't think what young people are coming to. Monty. Yeah, he wouldn't be at all surprised if the price of copper went up and house property came down and we didn't all finish up in Kerry Street. <laughs> <laughs> you wretch. And I won't have you make fun of Papa. He's been very good allowing us to be engaged. Yeah, but, Freddie, my love, that's just what I mean. We are engaged. Yes. We are engaged. Oh, Monty. Dear Monty, I do love you very much. And we will have a delightful wedding at St George's and all the other Forsyth girls will be bright green with envy because you're so gay and handsome and dashing. But I shall look down my nose and be quite composed and cool. But underneath, here, absolute turmoil. Sounds ghastly. Agony. It's blissful agony. Do you think we'll be able to go through with it? I can. Can you? I dare say we'll survive. 
<laughs> oh, but none of that really matters. I've been joking because I'm so happy. Darling, I'll be a good wife to you. I promise. As long as we live and whatever happens. There. That's for my beautiful ring. I shall be so proud to wear it. Mama, Papa, are you there? I want them all to see it. My dearest child. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, Mama. And look, oh. exquisite, dear, charming. Five diamonds are always good taste. Papa, look. Monty, mm. dear. Mm. That must have cost a pretty penny. James! Well, I don't know. I can't tell. You keep its value, I shouldn't wonder. Well, never mind that, Papa. Well, you're quite right, sir. There's nothing like value for money. That's what I was say. Well, isn't anyone going to congratulate us? Yes. I shall. Every happiness will it. Thank you, Soames. And to you too, Darty. Congratulations. Ah, thank you, Forsyth. Uh, not only do I gain a bride, but also a brother. There's richness for you, as Mr. Squeers said when he ladled out the dishwater. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's that? Uh, who's this chap, Squeers? You know, dear, one of Dickens' characters. Dickens? What's he got to do with The fellow's been dead for years. Good riddance, too damned radical. Now, James, don't get oh. into a tizzy. You know it upsets your digestion. Oh, I'm so pleased it's settled at last, Monty. Now we can all be comfortable. Mm. But it's such a distracting time for everyone. His Especially Winifred, of course. Girls do feel acing so much more deeply than men, I always think. Winifred, dearest. <laughs> there. Soames, don't they make a handsome couple? Very handsome. You see, James, Soames agrees with me. And if Soames says so, it is so. And Soames, dear, you'll be next. It won't be long now before you're engaged, too. What? And... What's that? Yeah, nobody told me. Why didn't There's nothing to tell, Father. Mother's romancing, that's all. Oh, sure, now you tell now, you'll me. You'll be the first to know. Don't hmm. mind my husband. He always insists on being told things. Oh, well, I can't imagine. He always finds them disagreeable. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Which I can't imagine that, Now, so. Monty, I shall send you away. Oh, Mama, no. Indeed, yes. Oh, but we shall expect him for dinner, if he's free. <laughs> I shall be delighted. At seven, then. Winifred, you may see him to the front door. Thank you, Mama. But remember your decorum. If any of the servants are about. Yes, of course, Mama. Run along, then. Au revoir, Monty. Au revoir. <laughs> Goodbye, sir, and uh, thank you. Mm, yes. Soames. Bless you, Papa. I'm so happy. Oh, I dare say. I dare say. There now. Monty. No. Is there anyone we should ask for tonight, I wonder? Mm. Not enough notice. No. Perhaps you're right. But uh, isn't there someone you'd like? Just to make up the number. Eleanor Otway, perhaps. Millie Bannister. No. Oh, pity. Just the family, then. But we must have something special. I shall go and see Cook at once. Uh, plover's eggs? Lobster. I wonder if Monty likes lobster. Oh, we'd better have both. Well, Soames, you don't say much. What do you think of him? Oh, he's an oily bounder. Oh. Ill-bred. Too much of a clown for me. I don't care for witticism. Oh, why should you? I don't myself. Still, it might be worse. You think so? Well, what if it's 24? 24, eh? Well, it's time she was married. Yes, yes. Great girl like that. Your mother was 18. Yes, I know. You were 40. That's too wide a gap. I had my way to make. Well, that's the next point. We don't have to know his family because he hasn't got any. He's already come into his money, such as it is. Eight thousand, he tells me, on the house in Green Street. Mm. That is freehold. Oh, yes, yes, I've asked to see the deeds. He's got this seat on the stock exchange. Whether he works it, I don't know. Huh. I can't tell, but I dare say there's some income there. Well, as long as he brings every penny into the settlement. Oh, he's agreed to that. Well, keep him up to it, won't you? He'll try and wriggle out if he can. Mm. But, as I say, it might be worse. Now, as long as Winifred's secure. Oh, she will be. I'm putting her own 5,000 in trust and she'll get her allowance quarterly. You'd not lay a finger on my money if I can help it. Oh, I'm not easy, my boy, can't say I am. There, between your mother and Winifred. <laughs> Always thought that girl was a real foresight, level-headed. She's in love with the chap, I suppose. Oh, there's no doubt about that. That's the most important thing, Father. You'll see your grandchildren.
No. No, it can never be possible, Joe. I won't think about it, and neither shall you, so please, please don't try to persuade me any longer. I can't believe that I've allowed myself to put you in this position. It's shameful and dishonest, and I hate myself for it. Can you understand? I love you so much, and I always will. All I want is to be with you. My body's yours and my life. Whatever you want of me, you shall have whenever you need it. And I demand nothing of you. Nothing. Except your love. If you love me, I am content. I ask no more than that. So please, Joe. Come here. No. Then I must come to you. Oh, my poor love, you are in this state. Come on, come. stop crying. Please try and stop crying. Shh, quiet, quiet. You must try and stop crying. It can't be good for you. Besides, you see, it makes you excessively damp. Here, yeah. that's better. Come and sit down. I want to talk to you. There's nothing more to say. That's where you're wrong. But first, are you comfortable? Oh, yes. Good. Now, I gather you're content to remain my mistress. Yes, Joe. And that this relationship should continue indefinitely. As long as you wish it. On the grounds that I'm supposed to be a respectable person, a good family, social background, in short, a foresight. I am only thinking, Joe, if your father and June, they'd be hurt. Of most course dreadfully. they'll be hurt. Especially my father. June's too young to care much. And your wife? Frances won't be hurt at all. Oh, oh in her pride, perhaps, and it may be inconvenient for her socially for a month or two. But you must know, my darling, that for years our marriage has meant nothing to either of us, except as a social convenience. When we married, we were too young. We didn't know each other. Now, now that we do, nothing remains. Not even liking, let alone love. Now, I suppose oh. this doesn't matter normally in our society. Jack takes a mistress, Jill consoles herself elsewhere, or goes in for good works, as long as the facade remains intact. The show of respectability, that's what counts. Oh, you're so cynical. No, my darling, truthful. Then why don't you play this game? Do you want me to? Do you really want me to? And let me ask you something else. If I were free of all these obligations, would you marry me? Oh, yes, Joe. Then that's what must happen. Francis must divorce me, and I shall marry you. Is it so simple? No, no, it isn't. It's the very devil of a coil. We shan't be forgiven for not playing this game, as you care to call it. I shall be an outcast, a traitor to my class and that monstrous family I belong to. And you won't mind? Of course I'll mind. I was brought up to this. It's part of me. Oh, God knows, sometimes I think it must be the worst part. Money, possessions, the security of the social stockade. <laughs> we'll be out in the jungle. I have always lived there. But you... Well, then I must learn how. One thing's certain, my love. I can't lead two lives. It must be a clean break or nothing loving you. I can't live with Francis. I think for a little while. You must try. What? No, my darling, listen. You must try because we don't know how strong that other part of you might be. What you call the worst part. If you decide without trying, you may regret it. And then you'd hate me. Oh. That I couldn't bear. Now look, Joe. Take that little house in Chelsea. I tell your wife I must leave at once and I'll go there, to Chelsea. And you'll come to see me whenever you can. And then, after a while, we shall know. I don't think I can do that. You have to. If only for June's sake and your father's. Oh, Joe, you will come, won't you? Often. Ah, oh, hello, dearest. Ready for bed? 
I had a huge supper. <laughs> oh, not too much, I hope. What are you doing? I'm writing invitations to a dinner party. Why are you doing it now? I thought you were going out. Yes, we are, but your papa isn't dressed yet. I know. He came and kissed me goodnight and read me a story. I see. May I stay up? No. I mean for the dinner party. No, dear, you're far too young. When may I? I've told you before, when you're 16. Come in. Yes, Fräulein. May I speak with your moment, madame? Yes, of course. Now, June, dear, say good night and run upstairs. There's a good girl. Mmm, you do smell nice. <laughs> I should hope so. Good night, dearest. Good night, Mama. Good night, Fräulein. Good night. Schlaf well. Yes, Fräulein. Madame, I regret, but I must give you my notice to leave. Leave? You want to leave us? But why? For personal reasons. Aren't you well? Quite well. I'm so sorry, I must go. But I thought you were happy here. Oh, yes, I have been happy, but... But you aren't any longer. Is it money? No, I don't suppose you'd do better elsewhere. Have you another situation to go to? No, madame. Well, then. That is yes. In a way. Fräulein, I have no wish to interfere in your private affairs. But aren't you being a little rash? I mean, shouldn't you stay here till you're quite sure of another post? I would rather go as soon as possible. Very well. You must do as you wish, of course. And I shan't hold you to your month's notice. Here are your wages for last month. Thank you. And a few pounds extra, just in case. Oh, no, madame, no thank you. I must take only what you owe me. Really, Fräulein, if I choose to be generous, it's only because you've done well here, and I think you've earned it. Please, I'd rather not. As you wish. Well, you'll come and see me before you go, won't you? And if at any time you need a reference... Thank you. Well, then. Good evening, Fräulein. Madame. Extraordinary girl. in Chelsea. Oh, George, dear, you must be mistaken. Not in the least, Aunt Hester, I assure you. Father saw them as plainly as I did. Plain as a pike stop. Chap had a latchkey. Ushered her in as bold as brass. He's keeping her. <laughs> the young devil. Oh, really, Swithin, that's not quite nice. Isn't it, by Joe? <laughs> Wish I had my time over again. Pretty little thing, they tell me. Is she pretty, Roger? Pretty? How should I know? Young woman, that's all I saw. Quite enough, too. Oh, she's pretty if you like that type, which I don't much. Great dark eyes, trim little figure. Chelsea, he could have property there, I suppose. Nonsense, property down there's no value at all. In that case, Roger, what were you and George doing in Chelsea? Well, don't tell me that you no, were... Look here, <laughs> Sweden. Don't, Father, keys excuse. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> Property or no property, why take that German governess and let... Hey, quite. Especially since she's left their employment. Left their...? Oh, yes, Nicholas. I met Francis in the stores and she told me. That's good enough for me, the young rogue. He's at least 32. Just wait till old Julian hears about this. Oh, no, no. He's, He's not to be about... told. Do you hear me? Not one of you to utter a word about this to anyone. If what you suspect is true, he'll hear soon enough. And if Joe has disgraced himself in this way, it's quite shocking and very sad. But if you talk about it all over London, then we shall have a scandal. And I will not have this family involved in a scandal. So mind what I say, all of you. Mr. and Mrs. James Forsythe, ma'am. Miss Winifred, Mr. Soames, and Mr. Darty. Oh, thank you, Smithers. You may bring in tea. Our duty call, Anne, as I promised. To introduce you all to dear Monty. Oh, Miss Forsythe, Mr. Darty. How do you do? I am very well. Now, 
as soon as you've met the others, you shall come and sit here by me, and you must tell me all about yourself. Oh, my darling child, this is indeed a happy occasion. Come along, Monty. Uh, Miss Hester Forsythe, Mr. Darty. How do you do? Mrs. Septimus Small. Oh, that's very Aunt true. Julie, that is. How do you do? <laughs> Mr. Darty. Uh, Mr. Swithin Forsythe, Mr. Darty. How do you do, sir? Uh, Mr. Hello, Nicholas Forsythe. How, How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Mr. George. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how stupid of me. You know George, of course. Do you know George's father, Mr. Roger Forsyth? Uh, how do you do, sir? How do you do? I must go back and meet our dad again. Well, he's launched. Hmm. Quite an ordeal. What? Oh, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> Mind you, he's got away with him. Yes, they call it charm. How oh, do they now? Well, they can call it what they like. I've no use for it. Father, do you remember the Herons? The Herons? Yes, he was a professor, client of yours. You're a trustee. Oh, I remember, yes. Died two years ago. Didn't cut up for much. What about him? Well, he left a young widow, second wife, much younger than himself. Uh, we had a letter from her today in the office. She's finding it difficult to live on her money. Oh, not surprised. I find it used hard myself. <laughs> well, I've had a look at her investments. They're very sound. So I should hope. But I think we might do better. You think so? Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps I should go down to Southwater. Where's there may that? Be a... In Hampshire. There may be other assets we can bring into the trust. Yes, well, don't commit yourself. Well, perhaps you'd rather go yourself. I? Why should I want to go? Journey like that. No, no, you attend to it. Very well. Oh, tea. Ah, tea. Ah. Mrs. Heron's expecting oh, me, Mr. Yes, Forsyth. Oh, yes, Please come in. Thank you. Quite a nice day, isn't it, sir? Yes. It's very nice. Shall I take your coat, sir? I'll do that. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm sure. This way, if you please, sir. Go on. Mr. Forsythe, Mom. Mr. Forsythe, how do you do? We met before, I think, in London. Yes, how do you do? Uh, may I introduce Mr. Lomax, Mr. Forsythe? How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> do sit down, Mr. Forsythe. Thank you. Uh, you had a pleasant journey down, I hope, Forsythe? Uh, thank you, yes. Mr. Lomax is a very good friend and near neighbour of mine. He knows all about my situation and the fact that I wrote to you for advice. Oh, I'll uh, leave you if you prefer it. No, not I... at all, if Mrs. Heron... Uh... Uh, my father would have come down himself since he is co-trustee with you, but, uh, well, he's not young anymore, so perhaps you'll accept me as his deputy. It's most good of you to come so far on such trifling business as mine, Mr. Forsythe. Nothing to do with money is trifling, Mrs. Heron. Indeed, no. Particularly when one has so little... And Mr. Lomax has been kind enough to help me since my husband died in such matters as he can. Oh, I am not a financial wizard, of course, don't you know? <laughs> but I felt that Mrs. Heron should have professional advice. <laughs> Quite. Uh, before I left London, I drew up a list of possible investments, Mrs. Heron. That is a copy. Are they quite, quite safe? Oh, our brokers recommended them. And so does my father. And you, Mr. Forsythe? Uh, certainly. Then naturally one has every confidence. Mm -hmm. You have no other source of income? No land, no property? None. Professors are seldom rich, Mr. Forsythe. And this house? Only a lease, I'm afraid. And that can be worth something. And not when there's only two years to run. Quite. And that's all? Nothing more. Oh, Irene has an annuity of 50 pounds a year. But naturally, that is hers entirely, and at present being devoted to her education. Irene... My stepdaughter. Ah, yes. Then I'm glad to say that by making the changes I've suggested there, you should be able to augment your income to some extent. To what extent? Possibly £150 a year. £150? As much as that? Well, every company fluctuates in its dividends now and then, of course, but that is a reasonable estimate. Well, this is perfectly wonderful, Mr. Forsythe. How stupid I was not to consult you before. Yes, you've certainly taken a great deal of trouble, oh. Forsythe. <laughs> trouble? Not at all. Do you wish to think about this for a day or two? Dear me, no. How soon can the transfers be managed? Oh, that might take a little time. 
possibly a month. I'd like to study the market variations for a week or two and buy at the best price. I see. Then, as a trustee, you must sign an authorization, which I'll bring down to you. Oh, that will be a nuisance for you. Not at all. Well, at least we shall have the pleasure of seeing you again. Thank you. Oh, there is one other thing. If you wish it, and only if you wish it, may I suggest to my father that he gives up the trusteeship and that I be appointed in his place. Oh, of course. Say, what a good on. idea. Don't you think so, Willie? Oh, uh, upon my soul, yes, yes. Excellent idea, Forsyth. <laughs> a young fellow like you will see us all out, what? <laughs> Quite. Uh, then, if Mrs. Heron approves... I do, indeed. Good. I shall so advise my father. Now, if you'll excuse me... Oh, won't you stay to tea? I was just about well, thank to... Thank you. Oh, my train. Oh, of course. But next time, Mr. Forsyth, do come earlier. And stay to lunch. <laughs> what a pity you can't meet Irene. Uh, yeah, she's off to Paris next week. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. yes, she obtained a scholarship at the Conservatoire to study the piano. <laughs> Such a gifted child, isn't she, Willie? Oh, no doubt about it. <laughs> and with so little money, a career of some sort is quite necessary. Uh, music teaching, can't say I should care for it myself. A lot of frightful infants banging away at Bach and Beethoven. <laughs> what do you say, Forsyth, eh? I'm sure there are many worse ways of earning a living. Well, we shall look forward to your next visit. And believe me, I'm most grateful. Not at all. Uh, goodbye, Forsyth. Oh. <laughs> Is Mr. Tim Timothy coming down to tea, do you know? He said not, ma'am, so I took him a tray upstairs. Thank you. What's keeping Julie, I wonder? I haven't any idea. Thank you, sir. Oh. Julie, you're very nearly late for tea. Where have you been? Well, when dear Septimus was alive, we always had tea at five. So I cannot custom myself. After 15 years? Really, Julie. Oh. Nonsense. Have you been out? Just in the park for a short walk. Oh. Everything looked so pretty in the sunlight. Yes, yes, but but uh, did you meet anyone? Only Mrs. Roger and Mrs. Nicholas. I wanted to talk to them about the wedding. Oh, the Rogers are giving silver. Oh, they always do. But the only thing they could think about was, uh, you know, the Chelsea adventure. What's that? Who told them? Oh, oh I've no idea, dear. Now, Julie. But, but Anne, dear, uh, Roger was the first to find out, don't you remember? He was bound to tell Mrs. Roger. And she was bound to tell Mrs. Nicholas. And so it goes on. Oh, tittle tattle. Oh, really, dear, but it's only in the family. And Hester, it appears that young George, so enterprising, I think, actually went to see the estate agents in Chelsea. Uh, Roger knows them, of course. And what do you imagine he found out? What? The German girl is living there, but she's not the tenant. Who is? I give you one guess. Now, Julia, no. I have told Mr. you Julian, not ma'am. Oh. oh, Julia, how nice. Oh, I've had board meetings all day. Oh. <sighs> Dry stuff. Oh. <laughs> I thought I'd look in for a moment. Um, uh, how's Timothy? He's, he's a little upset today. He's always upset. What is it this time? The German emperor. Timothy read in the Times of his attempted assassination Oh, it's too dreadful. I don't know, blustering chap. Oh, Julian. Anyway, what's he got to do with Timothy? He's not a German. He's anxious about the price of shares. Timothy's in consoles, isn't he? Three percent for his money, that's all he gets, all he ever will get. More fool him. Oh, Julian. You can tell Timothy from me that if ten German emperors were assassinated tomorrow, huh? consoles would not budge one farthing. <laughs> I will tell him. Thank you, Julian. Dear Julian. So reassuring. Speaking of Germans, I was, yes, I was only... And what is it, Julie? Is see it? you're bursting with something. Mm. I am not interested in discussing the Germans. Neither, I'm sure, is Julian. When you arrived, we were talking about Winifred's wedding. I hear the Rogers are giving silver. What shall you give, Julian? I dare say they'll entertain quite a bit. Emily will see to that. A dinner service. Mm. Julian always gives a dinner service. Royal Worcester, I fancy. Get your money's worth. Very appropriate, Julian. And Winifred is sure to look after it. Such a very sensible, level-headed girl. Mm. Voila. Et voila. Oui, c'est très bien. Is it all right? Oh, it will be, mademoiselle. It will be. Madame de Brie. Hmm? You're married, aren't you? I was. Now, no longer. Oh, I'm sorry. What happened? The Prussians happened nine years ago. 
The war happened, mademoiselle. Was your husband killed? He was. I won't. No, perhaps I shouldn't. Now, we take off the gown. Careful. Careful, please. Yes, since 1870, France is full of widows. What's it like to be married? Oh, cela dépend. But this you should ask your mother. Heavens, I couldn't do that. No? Well, we'd both be dreadfully embarrassed. Embarrassed? Oh, mon Dieu, in France. Oh, but I forgot this is England. Are you, um, quite ignorant then? Oh, don't misunderstand me. I know what I suppose I ought to about men and women. <laughs> well, then. But to be married, to leave your own home and live alone with someone who's really quite strange to you. To be a wife, responsible, instead of just a girl with only yourself to think about. All this you will learn, if you want to. For the rest, marriage is like life itself. Sometimes heaven, and sometimes hell. How much of each depends upon whom you marry. Madame de Brie is still here. Just finished, madame. Splendid. Winifred, Monty's downstairs. Monty? I'll go down at once. Like that? Winifred, my love. <laughs> he asked me to give you this. What is it? Something rather special, I believe. Oh. Mm, Madame the scissors. May I? Oh. Pearls. Oh, how beautiful. For my Freddy, to mark the happiest event in my life, Monty. Well, he is a thoughtful boy. Uh, uh, Madame? Oh, but they're exquisite. Mama, will you tell him I'll be down directly to thank him? Yes, dear, I shall. Oh, they do suit you. Just the thing to wear with white. What do you think, Madame de Brie? They are charming, Madame. Such a generous gift. Dear Monty. Joe? Joe, now where on earth? Oh, there you are. We're going to be late. Joe, you're not dressed. Oh, how could you? If there's one unforgivable thing, it's being late at a wedding. I'm not going to the wedding. Oh, well, of course you're going. If you go directly, you're Francis, still Francis, I told time. you ten days ago I should not be going. I don't remember. You do, but you didn't choose to believe it. Well, why should I believe it? I thought it was a caprice. One of your moods. Heaven knows there have been enough of those lately. Yes, I know. I uh, apologise. <laughs> you apologise. Well, that's splendid. But that's all you do. And I must tell you, it isn't enough. You've been behaving like this for months now. Refusing invitations. Coming home late when I've invited people to dinner. Taking no interest in anything, as far as I can see. Don't you realise the importance of our social life, of holding our position Francis, in society? Francis, please sit down. I want to talk to you. Talk? Well, I haven't got time to talk, even if you have. This is your cousin's wedding, not mine. It's your family that's going to be offended and vexed if you're not there. And June. She's a bridesmaid for the first time. You know she'll be utterly wretched. If none of that means anything to you, what about me? Don't I deserve your courtesy, at least? How do you think I'm going to feel if I have to go there without you? Well, you don't have to go either. Not go? Well, but I want to go. It is right and proper that I should go, and that you should take me. Look, all I'm asking is that you should behave like the gentleman you were brought up Francis! Please. Sometimes I think you... You are the most... Typical foresight of us all. Is that so bad a thing? Well, will you come? Uh, 
Oh, Joe, dear, and I'm so glad you could come. I'm enjoying myself. Always like a chance to kiss a bride. <laughs> well, young fella, the fine girl you got here, you look after. Yes, sir, I will. Now, Uncle Jolie, many, many thanks for our present. I shall feel so grand at our first dinner party. You must come to it. Oh, yes. you won't want a pack of old stages. Ah, these are famous pearls. Sounds they lovely. Uh, famous, sir. Uh, Foresight chains and talked to nothing else for the past two weeks. <laughs> yes. Well, don't spend all your money. You'll need it for the young darties come along. <laughs> really, sir. This is Bannister. Oh, Billy. What a good impartial. Did you ever see such a rumpty to collection of people? <laughs> Four sights, one and all. I know, old boy, you're going to tell me you're not. I know that. That's only 20% are. <laughs> look at them. Alike as peas in a pod. And a wedding partridge. A foresight wedding. That's when you see us in our most splendiferous splendor. In all the glory of property. And that's what it is, partridge, old boy. A major property transaction. And all the family have come to the market to see fair dues. <laughs> Look at my Uncle James. He's lost a daughter and gained a son. Swap one piece of property for another. And damned if he knows whether he's got a bargain or a disaster. <laughs> well, my little one, <laughs> you carried that train like a Trojan. I did, didn't I? And it was beastly heavy, too. Can your father anywhere? No, Mama's over there, but I haven't seen Papa. Perhaps he didn't come. Nonsense, he's here somewhere. Look, let's look for him, shall we? Yes, rather. Four in hand, Foresight, they used to call me in the old days. When my brother Julian and his partner, Nick Trevery, a wild chap, Nick, used to drive down to Richmond together. Mind you, I can only manage a pair these days, but the name sticks, don't you know? Any time you'd like an airing, my dear, I'll drive you out. Any time. A smart turnout needs a pretty woman to set it off. <laughs> ah, Soames. Do you know Mrs. Steele? My nephew, Soames. Well, your father's doing us very well. I'm glad you think so, Uncle. Yes, my dear. Not as good as my hide scene, but a decent wine. A very pretty little wine. <laughs> Yes, Uncle? Say, uh, you can tell me you're a long-headed chap. It's very good of them, Uncle. Huh? What? Oh, your Uncle Nick and I are having an argument. It's a legal matter, in a way. Nothing to do with me, not my affair at all. No? Huh? What's that? Well, it's about some property of mine in shortage. In short, the city... Uncle Roger. Yes, my boy? It sounds a complicated problem. What do you mean? You haven't heard it yet? Well, perhaps we should discuss it at the office. Shall I call round on Monday? What? No. Uh, well, I talked to your father about it. Very well, Uncle. <laughs> Swollen headed, they should have said. Come now, Roger, you asked for that. Mm -hmm. Why should you miss a fee? That boy's no fool. And, dear, I do think it was noble of you to come. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. James, everything has gone exceedingly well. Mr. Darty seems a nice young man. I liked the way he spoke up in the responses. I cannot bear not to hear what people say in church. You don't think we've overdone it uh, too ostentatious? Fiddlesticks, that's what weddings are for. Oh, I do agree. <laughs> Who'd want to go to a quiet wedding? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Dear Soames, I'm sure you've been a pillar of strength. I wish, I just wish I may live to see you as happy as your sister. But of course we shall come. A Thursday next, you said. We shall be delighted. <laughs> that is, if I can persuade my husband to stir out. I'm afraid he's becoming a positive recluse these days. Uh, excuse me, please. Uh, Francis, could I have a word with you? Yes, of course. Excuse me. Francis, where's Joe? I haven't seen him. Is he here? Uh, no, Papa. As a matter of fact, he didn't come. Didn't come? Didn't come? Why not, may I ask? No idea, Papa. Perhaps he had something better to do with his time. Should he have to do? Something's wrong. He's not ill. You're not keeping it from me. Oh, no, no, of course not, Papa. He's perfectly well. What is it? What is it? Something amiss between you two? Francis! Oh, please, you're making a scene. Oh, Isabel, my dear. How lovely to see you.
Well, naturally, we've sworn not to tell a soul, not even our nearest and dearest. And that's as it should be, because if it got to Julian's ears, who knows what he'd do? Oh, Francis. Well, my dear, we cannot tell whether she knows or not. But can a husband keep such a thing from his wife? German girl. Yes, their own governess. A little house in Chelsea. So Roger, she's Chelsea. Well, she's really quite a common girl. Helene? 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 Grand, nothing at all. Oh, John, I'm so pleased to see you. But I thought... When it came to the point, I dug my heels in. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, yes, now that you're here. Oh, Joe, should you have dug your heels in? Was it awful? Oh, not good. Oh, then you should have gone to that My wedding. darling, it would have been the easiest thing in the world to go. Sit in the church, rub shoulders with all my friends and relations, kiss the old aunts, drink the champagne, <laughs> listen politely while my uncles talk about their money. They don't. Walk around with Francis, hand in hand, all smiles and small talk, pretending that everything's perfect. But we're the most devoted, loving couple in the whole of London. And who knows what's being said behind our backs? What? Oh, make no mistake, it's got around. I've heard enough to be sure of that. Oh, no. Are you sure? Oh, nothing remains a secret in my family, my love. I've told you absolutely nothing. It's not that they mind. Even the ladies, especially the dear ladies, they get a delicious thrill of shock at the mere hint of wickedness. I expect they all think that I'm the very devil of a fellow. And the ironic thing is, I'm not. Nor do I want to be. In fact, I think I'm constitutionally incapable of being the devil of a fellow. All I want is to live openly, decently, lovingly with one woman. And you shall, Joe. Forgive me, but how could I know that you weren't like most men? Greedy and selfish, taking pleasure of women without love, but you're not. I'm so happy. I'm so wonderfully happy. Because I have something to tell you, we're going to have a child. 